Welcome back, everybody. This is Eric and Shermichael here with I Write Veteran 8888. That's right. I got my buddy Sherm down to do a top five <laughs> guns video for, with me here today. This is going to be fun, man. I mean, these are some guns that I think everybody has seen. Many people have shot. But if you haven't shot them, you absolutely have to. They're not exactly on the cheap side. Let's be honest <laughs> about it. But I mean, Eric, you got to shoot all of these things, bro, and you love them. That's right. Today, boys and girls, we're going to be talking about the top five race guns, all right? So we're talking pistols that are set up for high performance, high speed, mm -hmm. fast shot splits, competition, all right? So we're going to be talking about some competition guns. Now, Sir Michael did allude to some quite expensive pistols. We do have a few that are a little bit more affordable as well. So uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money to compete, and we are yeah. going to show you some lesser price options as well. Before we get started, I would like to thank our friends at Sonoran Desert Institute for supporting our videos. Big shout out to them. If you're looking for a career in gunsmithing, you want to build race pistols, right? Look no further than SDI. They do a ton of great stuff. Their, their uh, and programs are awesome. Their instructors are amazing. Um, they've got some great curriculums. So check them out. SDI, they've got a great drone program. They've got reloading programs. So to elevate your career in gunsmithing, look no further. SDI, Sonoran Desert Institute. Check out the link in the description box below and tell them that we sent you. Big thanks to SDI. They're a long-term supporter of our videos. Top fives, baby. Yeah, top Let's fives. Go. Let's do it. So, all right. So just the ground rules on top five. There's no particular order. We just kind of go about these. And there's always a wild card. So there'll actually be six guns in this video. <laughs> Let's start out on the on the, on the the down low, okay? We're, we're, and, and look, this is not to be disparaging towards the pistol I'm about to show you. But we are going to go through some high-end race guns uh, from... Uh, Taryn Butler, you know, Taryn Ta Tactical does some awesome stuff. And, of course, the uh, wonderful people of Toscato. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's start out with something kind of entry-level and basic, right? So this is my Smith & Wesson Performance Center 9L. All right, it's a it's a pretty basic m and I do have the Taran Tactical extensions that are run on these. So that takes a uh, standard 17-round magazine and gets uh, like an extra five in there. So this winds up being like a 22-shot magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I like about the Taran extensions is that when you go to eject the magazine, you actually get a good bit of extra weight there with that base plate. So I like the additional weight in addition to the extra capacity. So yeah. um, that's one big point. So I have about five of these mags set up with these extensions on them. Uh, which is great. And of course, it's a it's a polymer frame M and P with a five inch barrel. Okay, it is ported. All right, it's their standard Armor Right finish, high sights, and we've got a Trigicon uh, MRO on this. Oh, I'm sorry, the SRO on mm -hmm. this particular guy. And of course, it's got a slide riding plate. But other than the match grade barrel and the pretty basic frame, it's a pretty straightforward gun. That you know, this is an entry level gun that can get you into competition for not a ton of money. Yeah, uh, they're they're quite accurate. The yeah, so the entry, are good. the entry for competition. I mean, to, not to interrupt Eric, but the entry for competition doesn't have to be difficult for someone who's saying, "Hey, I just want to sort of get out there to improve my skills, to test myself." So Eric mentioned uh, the Taron Butler. So Eric mentioned the Taron Butler uh, base plate. So he's right about the weight of the plate. So anyone who's ever competed before, you know, when you're moving between stages, you do your first couple of shots. You you got to have a mandatory reload. You want to have, you want to have something that's going to add. At least for me, I don't want to say you want to have, but for me, I prefer to have something that's going to add weight to my mag. So as I'm moving around, right, and I'm running and I'm quickly trying to do a reload, I don't want to have to wonder, Eric, if this magazine is going to drop out. I need to know it's dropping out. So as I go to grab my other mag and reload and get back on target. I'm there. So that was a good point. Another thing, I haven't shot this, by the way, guys, but I did get a chance to sort of play around with it dry fire-wise. The trigger on this thing is so nice. And I'm not always the biggest fan of a curved trigger. Uh, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. It just sort of depends. Um, but the trigger on this is really nice. It's really smooth. That's important. You're taking repetitive shots quickly. You don't want a four-pound trigger, at least for me, unless you do an IDPA. IDPA is a little different. It's more defensive compared to USPSA. Um, also, Eric mentioned uh, that the fact that this thing has the cuts uh, for the gas to be released. You guys already know you're firing that pistol. You're allowing those gases to be released. It allows the gun to shoot a lot mm -hmm. flatter. So those things really, really matter. But again, the most important part, I think that Eric said, it's at a price point that's affordable for most people, man. These are like 1100 bucks. Yeah, dude. And that's without the optic, so uh, of nice. course. But yeah, try that so trigger nice. out a few times. So, so nice. Dude. 
I mean, dude, for it's probably a, for a like a two and a half pound, I would imagine for a production gun yeah. term, not yeah. bad. I no, love this pistol. This is nice. MMP Performance Center, and and I will say I'm a brag. So the, one of the first videos I saw of Eric, and I don't know how many years this was now, uh, was you and Jerry, and this was the gun that that you were shooting with Jerry, and I was like, oh wow, this is kind of cool, because at that point I had never really seen him do videos with other people, and you were the first person I had ever seen, and, I, and then I checked out your your uh, page and started following you. Yeah. But yeah, if if Jerry can shoot this thing. If it's good enough for Jerry, it's good enough for me. I think it's good enough for you. I think it's good enough for you guys who are watching the video. <laughs> so there's number one in our top five. Do we want to just kind of work up maybe in price? Yeah, we can. So that'd probably be yeah, be the combat, combat, combat master. master yeah. Look, I'm gonna pass this down to you, Sherm. So this here, guys, is a a Gen Five Glock 17. Um, when I sent this to Taryn, this was a traditional traditionally stock Glock, um, Eric. Original trigger. There was no stippling job done to the grip or anything like that. Um, the, the sights, they, they changed the sights for the raised uh, sights because they put an optic on it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a big fan of the Halison. You shot it. You were like, Sherm, this is too busy. <laughs> it was a little busy. <laughs> now, you did say that, that you could change the reticle on that. You can. Though. You can. I think with I have a, it with the crosshairs. With a normal dot, uh -huh. I, I'd probably be okay with that optic. With that... <laughs> It was a little it's busy too much, on a right? pistol, yeah, yeah. Maybe on a PCC. Because no, it's almost like a rifle. Like Again, it's like with the cross. I mean, you saw it's like with the crosshairs. You don't really want that for a pistol, so I got it. Uh, again, we have the Terran uh, base plates for this one. Um, I don't know. What is it, like three, four extra rounds in the mag? I think you get a plus four, and I think those base plates are like 30 bucks. So yeah, like if yeah, an yeah, average yeah. Glock <laughs> magazine body is usually about $30 for a Glock mag, and then it's another thirty, another 30 or thirty-five yeah. bucks to get the extension. So the mags wind up costing about sixty-five dollars, and the same is about true for the M and P mags. I think those mags are like thirty bucks, and then his base plates are like another thirty-five dollars. And you yeah. can get those in a variety of different colors. And I think he offers different weights as well, or weight kits for him, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's kind of cool. To so, add, like if you want the empty mag to weigh a lot, so mm -hmm. it clears the. the gun well, I know he has for the mag mag wells. I do know that you can get. I think this is a plastic one. I, yeah, this, so this is a plastic one. But if I'm not mistaken, he has some that may be like a, a steel or some type of a heavier composite material yeah. um, that makes the gun overall heavier so the gun is a lot flatter shooting. Mm -hmm. I had a heavier um, mag uh, well on a different pistol that I owned, and I took it off because it was so heavy, dude. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what company made it, made it, but I ended up trying to use that particular gun for a competition and just realized the gun was just too freaking heavy when I was drawing from holster. Does Taran do any work on the 34s and 17Ls? He does. So, like, if I want to send him a 17L to do the Combat Master conversion so on? So, on, on the website, when, when, so if you go to Taran's website and you look at all the options for the Glocks, I don't think I've ever seen a 17L. Doesn't mean that they can't, but the 34 they they can because yeah. so they have um, something called the um, what is it? It's Copperhead, and that's a Glock 34, and it's a similar color as the Sand Viper. And so Taryn does a lot of work on 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 those. It was in some movie that came out I think last year. But again, stock Glock, you send your Glock in the Taryn. It's an additional I think like thirteen ninety nine to get the full Combat Master package. Okay. And so what that includes, you, you have your stippling all the way around underneath your trigger guard. Uh, so so all the places pretty much where you have contact with the pistol with with both of your hands so anywhere you got contact you're going to get some type of a stippling in yeah. order to make sure that the gun is secure in your hands which is important all right Taran, if you're listening i might send you a 17l to do one of these <laughs> that'd be kind of cool i really did enjoy shooting this gun so some of these pistols i've never really dealt with but sherm is visiting here uh we had a great weekend together we did mm -hmm. some weightlifting, which was awesome yep. and we got to work out together and he brought some of these awesome pistols to show off, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to make a video. Um, but I really did enjoy yeah. this T one. Timney Trigger. Um, I want to say the Trigger. So, so Timney Triggers, they're, they're sort of competition-grade triggers are already really, really nice. Yeah. But Terran takes it a step further. Now, they will never say what they do, and I've been trying to get them to tell them the secret. <laughs> but apparently they get the triggers, and then they do something additional to them. I don't know if that's polishing the metals. I have no clue exactly what he does. But they get them to perform a little smoother. They're crispier. They're a little better. And he says that you sort of reduce the weight to around 2 pounds, 1.9, give or take. Yeah. Um, I haven't tested this one. So I'm going to be honest with the audience. I'm not exactly sure where it's at, but I believe it's around 2 pounds. But it's crisp. It's great. 
Um, you see the coating on the barrel. I love that because it keeps the barrel really, really smooth. It's almost like a, a DLC coating. I can't remember um, what this particular coating is called, Eric. There's a name for this particular color. Is that a titanium nitride? Yeah, that's right. It's like it's, a it's, brushed titanium yeah, nitride? Yeah, it's like the nitride coating. It's smoother. Everybody knows this. I don't really need to go into the science behind it. It's no different than... Uh, do I have a DLC? So that probably helps with lubricity and friction. Like you probably get higher muzzle velocities by having those those hard coatings. Yeah, so it's no different. I mean, this is a Staccato XC. It's a DLC coated bar coated barrel, and every pistol that I have, I try to get the DLC coated barrel yeah. because unlike the CS, the new CS by Staccato, which is not a DLC coated, to me and some people, um, Eric have told me, Sherm, that's ridiculous that you will you don't notice a difference. I think there is a difference, Eric. I mean, I don't know what you think about that. I think you're going to get higher muzzle velocities out of a of, of a harder coating like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's less fr it probably reduces friction and helps with lubricity. So I think so. It probably helps with cleaning. Like when you clean it, it requires oh, less, less less passes yeah. to clean. So I just think I think it's a little smoother to me in, in terms of how it cycles, but. I've had other guys say to me they don't agree with that. Like they, and quite they, frankly, it looks awesome. It does look awesome. Hey, but but I but I'd be curious to, to hear what, what what your folks, <laughs> what people on your page think. Like, do they think a DLC coated or titanium nitride coated barrel? Do you think that makes a difference, or, or are you sort of of the camp of like, yeah, sure, I don't think it makes a difference, man. I'd like to know what people think, Eric. Yeah. Uh, well, let your leave your comments below yeah. on that. <laughs> so we had the MMP is number one, and yep. then we had the Combat Masters mm -hmm. number two. So what's working our way up? So, so we, now we have... we're going to Staccato CS. Okay. So this is Staccato's new concealed carry pistol. I'll go ahead and and hold it up for you guys. And of course, all of these guns are clear. Just for our folks out there who are going to ask, did you check this? <laughs> Obviously, nothing. Nothing is in the. A pistol quick mention: <laughs> This was going to be the wild card, but we're skipping to the wild card just by by virtue of price because yeah. this was race guns. But you let me shoot this particular one. So this is Takato's carry gun. It is. It is. And 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 I love it. It just came out a couple months ago. Wow. Um, bull barrel Takato. They have bull barrels for all of their 2011s. And this particular uh, barrel is new and we can't zoom in on this i wish i could sort of show the differences um but i don't know if i can if you guys are even able to see this but if you look at this particular barrel you'll see some shavings to try to mitigate some of the weight okay on the barrel to make it just a little lighter it's got some like fluting and lightning yeah cuts. just just to try to make it a little you know a little lighter and, and anytime you remove anything from a pistol it's going to kind of make it lighter and some folks may say well all right well what's the difference of a 0 0.00 milligrams of weight but according to staccato it allows the gun to perform a little more proficiently and and i would tend to agree with that you're making it lighter uh it's no different than uh, the pistol there that we'll get to in a little bit so with this one i also have the curved trigger if you add the flat the flat trigger i believe it's about an 80 dollar addition to the overall price so instead of it being uh, 2,500, you're going to pay around 2580 to get that wow. that flat barrel. That's why I went ahead with the curve one, dude, because to me, I just didn't think paying 80 bucks for a flat trigger was r really made a difference, um, Eric. And, and again, I prefer flat triggers, but dude, 80 bucks is, that's kind of steep, got to so be honest. So that gun is cut for a slide rider. Yep. And, you know, you got some nice uh, kind of Novak-style sights on that bad boy. Mm -hmm. um, really nice looking cocking serrations. And the thing about those flutes. Yeah, front and rear. The reason that those flutes are, are in there, I mean, like, you can flute a barrel and not lose rigidity because of the way the flutes are cut. So mm -hmm. the whole idea is that you're actually reducing the, uh, or actually increasing the surface area of the barrel when you put those flutes in there, right? Because think about it, it's a it's a con, concave, yeah, concave, it goes in, so it creates more surface area, so it actually helps, it aids in cooling. So a fluted mm -hmm. barrel will cool quicker than mm -hmm. a non-fluted barrel. And you're cutting the weight and not losing any rigidity yeah. in, in the barrel. So you still have good accuracy. And that's a relatively short barrel. And I noticed it was like really accurate. Yeah, when it, it is. And then, I mean, you can put whatever. It's optic ready. So if you're SRO, or, I don't think a Delta Point Pro will fit on this profile, Eric. I haven't tried. So I, I don't want to say, but I do know you can put an SRO. And there are a couple other dots out there that you can put on. Also, with the CS, now this is interesting. So Eric and I were talking about this earlier before we got prepared for this. And he said, sure. So the Ter Terran guns can also fit the Staccato mags. I said, yeah, they are, they're interchangeable. But with the CS, Eric, it's a new dedicated 9 mil mag. So, like, this mag can't fit in the other Staccatos, and the other Staccato mags will not fit in the CS because the grip, bro, 
is slimmer. It's not as wide as the XC or the P Limited Duo over there. So I, I'm not going to lie. Originally, I didn't like that because I have dozens of staccato mags. And it's like, okay, well, why would I want dedicated mags when I have 50 or 100 staccato mags? I should just be able to interchange them with all of my pistols. Uh, but Scotto decided to do something a little different here again because it's a carry gun. And remember, so Eric's wife got a chance to play around with the pistols and she said, oh my gosh, she's like, sure, and these, the, the, the grips are way too wide. But with the CS, that completely changed. And remember, she liked the CS because the grip was more comfortable in her hand and that's a part attributed to this new, more narrow magazine. So I think that was sort of smart on Sakato's part. Yeah. So you're talking, the reason that we wanted this one to be a wild card, we kind of go out of order a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> the reason we, we wanted to make this one the wild card is because you've got a race gun company that makes a carry gun, Yeah. which is kind of cool. And uh, I do thing. like the slim, compact nature. The trigger's mm -hmm. great. Uh, shoots really great. Super great accuracy. I love the generous capacity. Um, yeah, so 16, for someone, you get three 16-round mags that come with the pistol. Wow. 16 yeah. rounds in your hand. I mean, that that's, that's definitely a nice thing to have. And it's actually a very slim gun. It's not that much bigger than like a shield plus or uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's really not bad at all, man. Um, I don't know if you can reach it, Eric. Yeah, I, I can reach it. Yeah, we're kinda, you know, when, when you watch Batman and, and Bruce Wayne is, is, you know, they're eating all the way across from each other, <laughs> the long table. But uh, yeah, this is a sweet pistol and, um, and the trigger's fantastic. The sights are just mm. wonderful. And mm. uh I'm glad that he brought these down for me to check out it. I've never really dealt with staccato that much. I've shot a few, but I kind of got the uh, I got the the, the penny tour, if yeah, you will. Yeah. So. What, what did you What did you think, um, Eric, in terms of the recoil? Because a lot of people will look at that pistol and they'll say, "Wow, it's small." Mm -hmm. Smaller pistols, you're always going to have more recoil. How mm -hmm. would you compare that to some other? Uh, c c carry gun, concealed carry pistols, I should say. I mean, it's a little snappy, but I would say mm -hmm. nothing unmanageable. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. a, a nine millimeter generally is not going to offer a lot of resistance. Right, right. I mean, if you get into a sure enough micro nine, like a one of the, those little like Ruger LCPs and yeah, nine, LC nine, boy, or if it's like a just, you know like a micro nine that's yeah. really small, mm -hmm. yeah, they can be snappy. snappy Even my P three sixty five is a snappy gun. The mm -hmm. Sig. Mm -hmm. But it's really a very controllable gun, very yeah. contro a very nice grip. You know, you get good stippling. It's easy to hold on to. Do you, the sights do you are think, good. You think it's worth the price point? Because it's 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 twenty five hundred bucks. It's a high end gun. I mean, if if yeah. you're a competitor that's already shooting staccatos, or if you're just the kind of person that really really wants a nineteen eleven and, and mm -hmm. that's your jam, yeah. Uh, and you just love the idea of a hammer fired gun, and yeah. maybe with some more modern appointments, mm -hmm. it is it is pricey. But you know, for someone who's a discerning pistol person that that wants something that's competition. Like that has that same level of care put yeah. into a competition pistol and their carry gun. Mm -hmm. I say go for it. I mean, yeah, I mean because I mean, it is pricey, but it's nice. You think it's worth? Yeah, I mean the the yeah. slide to frame fit is is really tight, yeah. so it maintains that accuracy. Like Eric said, if you're a 1911 person, but you want double the capacity and you're entering into that 2011 world, um, you're gonna get that double capacity. It's hammer fire. I know a lot of folks like striker fire. Nothing against striker fire. We got some striker fires up here as we as we've already gone over. Uh, but to get that 2011 proficiency and accuracy and even the grip angle, I love the grip angles of, of 1911s and 2011s, generally speaking, and to have that in a small enough package to conceal, I think is incredible if you ask me. I love it. I really do. And I'm a little biased. I love staccato. like to be transparent with you guys. But I would definitely recommend people to check it out, Eric. Well, let's move down the line. All right. So, so that's going to be the P Limited. All right. So th this one has the Guns Out logo on it, man. <laughs> Dude, this is such a sweet pistol, man. So the the P Limited, and I don't know, guys, if the P Limited is still sold by Staccato. So I would say go to the website and check it out. Thanks, Eric. Go to the website and check it out. Um, I went to the website where it used to be listed individually. I didn't see it there, and I want to be clear with you guys because I don't want someone to go to the website and then come back to Eric's page and say, well, hey, you know, you guys showed this pistol. But I don't see it. So I would say reach out to Staccato if you're interested in uh, the P-Limited. But this one was designed through uh, Staccato's uh, design program that they have on their website. You know how SIG just rolled out, I guess, a year and a half ago now, where you can sort of customize your, your build? Mm -hmm. Staccato has something similar to that, and it allows you to put your logo. So like on this one, we have uh, – I don't want to flag Eric here. We have Guns Out, and then we have Go. 
and you can put your logo, your name, or if you're a former military or whatever the case may be, you can do that. So just to quickly go over this DLC wow. coated barrel, I love you have the Dawson Precision twisted on comp. And I want to be clear, you can take this off, Eric. So let's say I want to carry this concealed, which for the long time I carried my P concealed. And the original P did not have the option uh, to twist on a compensator. There's a tool that you put on and it enters in here and you twist it, although I've never taken this one off. You can literally take it off. Then there's another little uh, piece that you, you put on that screws back on to keep the ridges safe. And you can carry this appendix style like I used to carry my P. And guess what? Unlike the P, this is an aluminum frame. Remember, you're like, sure, this thing is so light. So, guys, this is an aluminum frame. This thing is light as heck. Uh, the, the trigger pounds on this one, I want to say, is about three to three and a half uh, trigger pound. Again, DLC coated aluminum. I got my SRO on here, twisted on a Dawson Precision um, comp. It's patent pending. I should say, I don't think it's completed the patent process thus far. Uh, but this is a this is a fun gun. You can compete with this. I have not competed with mine, but John, who's the other half of Guns Out, has competed with his, and he loves it, Eric. In case it hasn't been made clear, I know we might not have mentioned it earlier for some of the folks watching, uh, these are all 9mm, every single one of these. Yep. So uh, I do like the generous capacity of the magazines on the 2011 style, 1911s, oh, yeah. or I say 1911s, 2011, uh, a very modern uh, version of the famous pistol, you know, <laughs> but uh, I do love uh, one of the things that I was initially driven to with these staccatos was, was certainly the capacity. I, mm -hmm. I like the generous capacity. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a competition setting, it certainly is nice to have some extra capacity so you don't have to reload as much. And I guess all of these guns would also be um, certainly like open division, like complete custom. Where yeah, yeah I mean, all anytime you're, you're doing anything with a compensator for USPSA, uh, from my understanding, and I haven't competed in a couple months now, so someone out there may say, sure, you're not exactly right. So if I'm not, just please forgive me. Uh, but I'm almost certain anything that includes a comp would automatically put you in open. Right. I'm almost certain about that. And, and so that, that so that's where you get into this weird little but These gray... certainly aren't stock guns. Yeah, like, but, that's, are... but that's a gray area, though, Eric, because it's like, would I want to run this in open against someone who's running a, a freaking uh, a checkmate a checkmate <laughs> i mean that's a whole different advantage so so i don't know if, if i personally would want to compete with the comp one i twist that sucker off and then go and compete with, with that new what is it limited there's a new division in uspsa for 2011s uh, i twist it off and compete with that versus trying to compete in open because i have a compensator on i know end. one thing that particular gun is one of the flattest shooting guns yeah, so what fight. did you think like Great trigger, super flat shooting, <laughs> accurate, shoots exactly where it's looking. It's just such an accurate shooting experience. And yeah. it doesn't matter like if it's an entry-level staccato or the the one that I like that we're about to show off here in a second. <laughs> like, look, look, the, the Sam Viper's my jam. We're going to get to it probably last because it's it's definitely the most expensive gun mm -hmm. um, on this table. Well, that well that's Taryn's gun. But out of all of the guns that, I, that I've shot, though, those staccatos, man, like, they're, they're so awesome. They and are. Flat shooting, just... It's just a great shooting experience. How, how do you feel about the grip being like the sort of polymer grip versus like some of the old school 1911s? What are your thoughts on it that? It doesn't bother me, you know, because yeah. I'm so used to shooting so many modern guns. Mm -hmm. And because mm -hmm. of what we do with the channel, we're shooting so many different guns on a regular yeah. basis. I, I don't mind it. Like, it, yeah. it didn't It didn't really take hardly any getting used to. Well, Staccato it, it said that, that, that the reason that they did this, and, and Tony Pignato uh, taught us this a couple years ago when we first started establishing our relationship with Staccato, that they decided to, to go with this type of grip uh, to mitigate the energy from the recoil. So as you're firing the pistol, and, and you know this, Eric, way better than I do, and there's all of this energy, it has to go somewhere. So they decided to go with a polymer grip to sort of help diffuse some of that energy. And so we learned that from Tony Pignato, <laughs> thus helping the pistol shoot a lot flatter. Outstanding. Yeah. Cool all right, we're going to move man. on to the next selection. All right, this is one that Eric... It's like ordering from a boss menu. This <laughs> is the staccato that this like, is, dude, this is, I want this gun. So this is the XC, and on my XC... So, Eric, believe this or not, I used to carry this concealed. I believe it. Like like this... So, guys, let me, let me just... Let me show you guys, like, how big this thing is. I carried this appendix, and I'm a small guy. I'm a lean guy every day you see my x300 uh, ultra by surefire on there just in case i gotta get ready it's late at night i'm ready uh, so this is the xc oh. and the xc has a compensator on it and as you guys can see and i'm gonna give it to eric to let him sort of play around with it but 
You got you can see the compensator on it. It's an amazing gun. So Staccato has something also called the XL. So you have the CS, you have the CS, you have the P, you have the XC, then you have the XL, which is really their competition gun. And I didn't bring my XL. It's a much longer barrel, so a longer sight radius. But the XC, to me, Eric, is just like a weird, funky kind of gun. I've competed USPSA with it. Um, the, the, so the trigger usually on the XC is around two pounds. Um, mine is a lot lighter. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want anybody <laughs> criticizing me. But I think Eric could probably say it's ridiculously light. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, again, hammer fire, DLC coated barrel. You have the compensator to release th th that gas. And that's a built in versus a compensator that's twisted on like the P limited. So I just want to make sure I distinguish that. And also, by the way, and Eric, we haven't mentioned this. All of these staccatos have a toolless guide rod. So remember, like 1911s, you got to have that little weird little pin thing in order to remove the guide rod. A bushing wrench. Yes. I freaking hate that thing, bro. Like, I never have ever used one of those before until I got this darn thing, and I'll get to that next. I'm not a big fan of that. So yeah. shout out uh, to Staccato for working with Dawson Precision to have that toolless guide rod because that means if you're out shooting – you're not worried about, oh, crap, where's the tool if I have to take my pistol apart, bro? So a couple of observations on this gun. Uh, I do like how easy the slide is to pull back. It's it's super easy to pull back. I know you've seen some of those videos of people doing the air rack on the staccatos, <laughs> and that's it's very, very true that it's, it's not a really oversprung gun at all, which is kind of surprising. Mm -hmm. And the trigger, of course, is, oh, <laughs> dude, this trigger is so fantastic on this gun. It just breaks like glass. You do have an ambidextrous safety, which is really cool, mm -hmm. um, that you can reach from both sides of the pistol. I love the really attractive cuts. Um, it's really sleek looking. The uh, the, the uh, compensator is obviously awesome. You do have this nice, generous, extended magwell mm -hmm. to really help with those mag changes. So in a competition gun, I mean, this this is something that you could totally have as your carry gun if you wanted to, but also, I mean, you could compete with this sucker. Oh, yeah, you no can. Problem. I have. It I've done a couple so, matches with it. This gun is so accurate, and you can shoot really fast splits with this thing, and you can just absolutely clear the plate rack with this bad boy. That's a fantastic I mean, Eric, you, you, you were doing a couple of double-triple shots with it and had no problem staying yeah. on target. Oh, yeah. It's a wonderful a fantastic pistol, piece man. of gear right there. So we have one left to show it's now. And, and look, I'm, I'm not going to lie, man. I don't know if it's just by <laughs> virtue of the new Wick movie or just from our conversation with Taryn and, and getting some more details on this. But, dude, this is the gun that's blowing my skirt up right now. So this, guys, is the Terran Tactical Sand Viper. So the, the Pit Viper, the all black one, is the one that's in the John Wick 4 movie. And, of course, John Wick never uses red dots on his pistols. It's complete iron sights, as, as you know. Uh, that one also comes with a dot, but also iron sights. The Sand Viper, the same. You can get it with the dot. There isn't a front sight on this, but you can also get it iron sights as well. It's so funny because when Taryn gave me, Taryn gave me this, and this gun, and I was telling Eric this, this was actually like his sort of show gun. So when he was training other people with this pistol, Keanu Reeves has shot this pistol. A bunch of celebrities have shot this pistol. A whole bunch of other renowned competitive shooters have shot this pistol because this was the one that Taryn would use when they were travel places, when people were coming by his range out in California. Before they started to really mass produce, he was like, hey, I'm working on this new thing, test it out. So I was able to, to get that pistol that he had for months and months for a lot of people getting to shoot. So that was cool. Um, I will say, when I asked him, I said, well, Taryn, what gun is going to be in the new John Wick movie? And he said, well, you can't say anything to anybody, but it's yours, but it's going to be all black. And I was like, holy smoke. So this is the new pistol for John Wick. I didn't know the name at the time, but he told me this a couple months ago. But this thing, man, is truly incredible. I mean, similarly to the XC that Eric has over uh, near him, you have the built-in compensator, which reduces the weight like crazy. You have a ridiculously tight uh, frame. Um, 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 I, I, my mind just went blank. Slide here, to Eric. frame fitness. Slide, slide to frame fitness is super duper tight. Sorry, guys. I went blank there for a minute. I, I love that because you don't get a lot. Of, I mean, you don't get a lot of movement, Eric, at all, which, again, that just helps with the accuracy of the pistol. I mean, how many times have you shot a 1911 or 2011? And it's loose as heck, and yeah, the accuracy is kind of like it's it's okay. That's I learned from Taryn. That stuff really matters, man. Um, you also have a ridiculously light trigger. I mean, the trigger on this thing is around one and a quarter. I want to say 
It's light as heck. It comes with two different magazines. You have a 17 round mag, and I want to say the other mag is I want to say it's like 26 rounds. I mean, it's a it's yeah. a long. It's got Eric. his base plates. On. Base plates, yeah. It has the Terran base plates on it. Uh, if you saw in the John Wick movie, you know you take it off, stab somebody in the eye if you have to. Yeah, it's got I that love this really thing. sharp edge on the uh, on the frame, yeah, dude. Or on the slide, on the slide. Or, uh, on the, I'm on sorry, on the, the frame. frame. Yeah, on the yeah. frame. Um, <sighs> I, I love this thing. You have these incredible, you know, uh, cuts. So if you want to do a press check, you can. I know some people say press check is stupid, but I like to do my press check sometimes. Um, you also, again, shaving some weight here. Eric was talking about that with the XC. We talked about it. With uh, with the Smith and Wesson, we talked about it a little bit. The Combat Master. Anytime you can save weight, but also not only saving weight, but reducing that heat, Eric, like you were talking about, that's really really important when you're shooting a thousand rounds in a match, man. You want to try to keep that that barrel as cool as you possibly can. And you know, there's a, there's a little bit that you can do while maintaining the overall integrity of of the slide. I would argue, remove a little bit, let it breathe. It looks cool. I love it's a win-win, it, right? I think it's a win-win. But I will say this. My only complaint. I do not, Eric, like this God Rod, man. Really? I, 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 I just really prefer a toolless God Rod. It's easier. Anytime I clean this thing, I got to go find the bag because I keep all the tools. It, it's a nightmare, <laughs> Eric. I, I just – I don't like it. I really, really don't. One other thing I'll say, um, you, you have uh, some grip texture here that Taryn put on. You also have a huge – Huge. I mean, look at this. You, you're not missing that. Yeah. You, you're not missing that mag release at all. Compared to, let's see, what can we compare it to over here? Look at, I mean, yeah. Look at the the, the look at the mag release on the Scott OP Limited compared to this. Yeah. You ain't missing that mag release. You're, you're Eric. You're not missing it at all, bro. So, I love this thing. It's 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 incredible. I mean. <sighs> That, that trigger, guys, I don't know if you guys can really see this from where I'm at, but I'll try. Look at this. I like how little effort, like to pull the slide back, so little effort. Eric. It's such a sweet pistol, dude. If you want to say a couple things about it yeah. from your time shooting it. Yeah, I really enjoyed this pistol. I mean, out of everything, I only got to shoot a few mags out of each one. But, dude, the Sam Viper, to me, is the winner. And I, I really love this pistol a lot. It's just all business. The trigger is great. The slider frame fitment is great. Mm -hmm. I was shooting fast splits with it. It's got uh, Taran's uh, flared magwell on there. Mm -hmm. It's a fine a fine piece. Definitely the apex of pistol technology. And, uh, wow. what I mean, just to, to get to hang out with Sherm and shoot <laughs> yeah, all of these of fun, awesome man. race guns. I mean, it's, it's been such an interesting couple of days. And uh, I got some real crude footage uh, that you'll probably be seeing. We, we just kind of went. <laughs> we just had a little we fun, We went rogue man. on it, you know. But we had a lot of fun. And uh, I, I really hope that everybody enjoyed today's video. This has been our top five race guns. We tried to kind of include some stuff that was across a, a wide price range. Yeah. And we, we, we respected all the, the, the top players in the yeah, game. I mean, yeah. look, Turan got his due in this. And, of course, the, the, the folks with the staccatos there. I mean, look, mm -hmm. these, are, these are some of the highest performing pistols that you can buy. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, these guns will, will absolutely show what you're capable of. Oh, they, they will. And even, yeah. if you're, I mean, even if you're not a good shooter, uh, I've seen where staccato will take, like, novice shooters and say, well, for example, they have this thing of shooting the XC because the XC will make you a better shooter. You would see people take like a Glock or something and be all over the place and shoot the XC, and it's like holy smoke, they're they're shooting in the A zone, yeah. and it, it and it is in part because of how well those pistols are made. The trigger is incredible, uh, the grip angle, and see, I don't want to really get into anatomy of, of the human hand here, uh, but one of the things that I love about the 1911s is that grip fits more naturally in the human hand the way we naturally grab things versus a Glock. And I'm going to be honest, Eric, for Glocks, when I've competed with Glocks in the past, I, I have to make a little adjustment sometimes, man. Like, it's not as straightforward as I'm as I, as I it is when I'm shooting a, a 2011 or even a 1911. A Glock, i got to make a little adjustments because sure. the 1911s, just like 2011s, to me, that grip angle just fits more naturally in the hand. Yeah. I think out of everything uh, – I'm a Sam Viper man. Like, dude, that gun is so awesome. Like, I'm, I'm gonna have to get one. It, it's such a great. Pistol. We're gonna work on that, guys. I'm, gonna work I'm on working that. on some things for my brother yeah, here. Man. So stay tuned. You guys might see something in a couple of months. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna man. get to work on that.
Well, look, uh, Sherm, I really appreciate you hanging out with oh, me man, today. Oh, man, I've had on, so uh, much fun, On dude. this Top 5 Guns video. Absolutely. And uh, I always love having you down to, to get in the studio. Well, I love being with you because I always get an opportunity. One of the things I love about Eric, guys, I mean, I consider him to be like the the mad scientist of, of firearms. And the last time I was here, I did the gun gripe. You guys may remember. I guess that was maybe a year or two years ago by now. That's, that's been a minute. And I learned a lot about some of these historic guns, fell in love with black powder, and, and sort of went down that rabbit hole of reading more about that. I still want to get one on my own and anytime i'm with eric i'm learning new things i got to shoot the argos ar the new ar which was really incredible love the gas block system on that thing shot incredibly flat and i was happy to be able to bring some new things to the guy who has every freaking thing uh, to shoot so i, I appreciate you bro and i, I really appreciate do, you bringing man. your grunt down i got to check that out yeah which was different right yeah <laughs> so loud and yeah it's like sure what is this it's freakish <laughs> but it was a nice rifle Always a good day to hang and, and shoot some guns. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. You know, let me know in the comments section below, what's your favorite race gun? Is there something we didn't include that is your absolute favorite? Let me know in the comments section below. Maybe we'll revisit this video in the future. But big thanks to Sherm for hanging out. Uh, Sherm, where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, find me on Twitter, at Shermichael underscore, Instagram, at Shermichael underscore, Guns Out TV on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube. And I also started my own new YouTube stuff. If you guys like politics, I've spent a lot of time in politics. That's Shermichael Singleton. Look me up. I'd love to have you as a follower. And your radio show? Oh, Sirius XM, uh, Urban View, every Saturday, 126 from 2 to 3 p.m. It's an interesting show. A conservative voice among a lot of minorities that aren't typically conservative. So, guys, I'm trying to bring our message to people who don't always hear our message. So I would appreciate your support. Right on. Thanks for watching, y'all. Many more videos on the way. We'll see you soon. <laughs>